This is a five and a quarter inch um, floppy disk drive, which you see right here. So that's how it looks from the front. It's quite heavy, it's all metal. It's a vintage uh, floppy disk drive. I uh, took this out of my old 386 computer back in, um, I think, 94 when I got a. Um, when I got a Pentium 100 megahertz computer, I took the parts out of my 386 and put it into my uh, Pentium, you know. And this was one of the parts that I took out of it. So this is a chin on five and a quarter inch 1.22 megabyte floppy disk drive. And as you can see the connectors in the back, it's got a Molex connector for the power and this connector for um, the floppy disk it's an older type of floppy disk uh, connector it's a little bit different from the three and a half inch connector for the three and a half inch floppy disk drive and this is made out of very solid construction I don't know if this thing works had it for more than um, more than 30 years. I think I got it in 1989 with my 3D6 SX computer. It was basically in my garage for like a very long time. And the way you use it is you just take a disc out. This is a floppy disk right here. It's one of the backups I made for my game for Budokan, which is a PC game. So you just stick it in here. And then you just press down on it. It goes right in and take it out. That's it. You could uh, still hook this up to a modern computer. Not going to be a problem, but you just have to find find the right connector for it. So here's my uh, box of uh, floppy disks, which I had a long time ago. This disk, I don't know what the heck that is. I don't even have that printer anymore. All the backups I made for my old computer. I don't know if these floppy disks still work or not. Hmm. It's very old. Max, uh, that was a very popular uh, floppy disk uh, maker back in the 1980s and 1990s. Yeah, so this is how a floppy disk looks like. A vintage floppy disk. Very uh, solidly constructed. Very well made. It's very heavy. and They don't make things like this anymore. Not like this. And it cost... I think it cost more than $100 back in 1990. Fairly expensive as well. Okay. Right now I'm just checking some of my old floppy disks from years ago. As you can see right here. That's Windows 2000 so a floppy disk. Gonna insert this disc in right there. Um, turn this off.
This is the driver for my old um, Winfax machine. Gonna try to extract it. The transfer rates are painfully slow from a floppy disk drive to uh, your hard drive. It's a pretty slow medium. You could hear it right here. <laughs> okay, it copied. It still works. I can't believe it. Amazing. Looks like I can't just drag and drop. There's a solution to this. Just gonna have to use DOS prompt. Gonna go to A drive. Type in copy. First I'll make a directory in C drive. And D. Just doing, I'm doing this with one hand, so I'm not typing very quickly. Okay, copy, asterisk dot, asterisk to C drive. Yeah, that's better than using a, the GUI. That's how we used to use floppy drives back in the day. I'm going to see if it's in there. I made a directory called WinFax. See if everything was copied. Everything was copied except for that WinFax directory. Guess I'll just drag that one in here. I can't believe these discs still work. This, let me check how old uh, the files are in this disc. See how old it is. Uh, let's see. Since these files were created in uh, February 17th, 1995. Can't believe this disc still works, man. It's amazing. Make a new directory. I'm gonna put that disk one. I'm gonna put all the files in there.
disk to take the floppy disk out and put it in the next one. So put this one in. DIR refresh the drive. Not many files there. Now I'm going to go to C drive. The CD disk to go to A drive. Copy. Asterisk This floppy drive right here um, It's pretty old I I had it on my um, in my 3d6 SX computer I salvaged it from my 386SX and I put it into my Pentium 100 megahertz computer and that's how it's uh, that's how that's how I have it right now and then I put it into another computer which was a uh, which was a Pentium Pentium um, I think it was a Pentium 2 or something. And then it ended up in this computer. Okay, I got all the files in here. Okay. So, so with the floppy drives, um, when the disk is reading like that, you don't you don't press this because because uh, when it's reading, the head is like like pressing on the disc and when you eject it it damages the disc so you let it finish and then you take it out take the disc out like this okay, I got that Winfax thing in. this right here is a CD driver I'm gonna get this too Yeah, I can't believe this thing works. It's amazing. I just hooked it up today. It freaking works. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna see how old this disc is right here. Okay, it's not that old. It was. Uh, Made in um, June eighth, two thousand. That's not too bad. This one's nineteen ninety six, around uh, August twenty fourth, nineteen ninety six. Amazing. This still work. That's just freaking unbelievable. Okay. 
1999. Yeah, this is Windows 2000. We were still using floppy disks uh, in 1999. <laughs> Amazing. I also have a five and a quarter disk drive. I think I'm gonna hook that up next time and try it out on this computer. I do have extra slot to add a five and a quarter. I think that about does it. That's pretty amazing how these uh, discs work. How, how long they last, I mean. Just amazing. It's uh, almost uh, 20 years old. Some almost as old as 23 years old. Pretty amazing stuff. Say thanks for watching from Ace 1000KS 1975. So as you can see the connector for the five and a quarter inch floppy disk is different from the three and a half inch floppy disk. So the three and a half inch would use uh, this type of cable, floppy disk cable. To uh, connect to floppy drive so you have two types of connectors one like this and another one like this so this one would essentially connect to the motherboard so it's a 34 pin uh, floppy disk cable let me check that for sure I, I don't really remember I don't have such a good memory Yes, it is a 34 pin, so. so if I wanted to use this, connect it to a modern computer, um, I will have to figure out where pin one is on this floppy disk. So it says right here in the rear, that's pin 34. So pin one is located right there where you see my finger so so I would have to align the red part of that floppy disk to that in order to connect it so that's one right there where you see the red so I said one was right there so I connect this just like that to this thing let me get my hands free. I'm gonna connect it right there and show you. Okay. So now it's connected, and I'm gonna show you right there. So that's how it's connected. So this is one, that's one. That's where I said pin one was at. So that's how you would connect it and you would connect this to your motherboard it goes in just one way so on your motherboard there'll be a notch like where you see my finger at my thumb at that notch so it just goes into your motherboard and you don't need any special type of connector to uh for the connect the power it's just a molex power connector and that's all it is so that's how you connect it so Taking it out is just as simple. You just pull it out and that's it. Can't do that with a camera, so let me get it out. Okay, you just pu pull it out and just push it right in. That's that's all there's to it. Now I took it out. And that was a cable. That's basically it. So there's two types of cables for floppy disks. So if you want to like go into retro gaming and use the original hardware to do all this stuff then um, you these are some of the basic things you have to know okay